Hello, everybody. We are back for another planner episode, and this is basically a rundown of how my second quarter planning with Sarah Cannon's HB90 went for me. Specifically, I'm gonna be talking about how I liked the planner in general, if I used it as it was intended. We're gonna do a brief flip through so you can see exactly what it looked like with all of my decorating and filled in and stuff like that. And then we're gonna talk about how I'm planning for third quarter and what my goals are. Now, as you can see, I have my third quarter planner carefully hidden behind this awesome Erin Condren, oh, what are these called? Folios, I think. I think they call them planner folios. Maybe, I could be wrong about that. And I will show you that after we're done talking about how my second quarter planning went in the HB90. So if you saw my video of my setup of the HB90, you will remember that I had three goals for second quarter. And in looking at Sarah Cannon's kind of, not instruction, but in kind of how she set the planner up and how she designed it, I kind of messed up my goals. Um, so first off, I made them too specific. Um, I made my projects my goals instead of having more general goals and having projects underneath them. So my goals for second quarter were to publish a memoir course, which, spoiler alert, not only did I not finish, I didn't start it, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, goal number two was to market the Black Magic Omnibus, which I did sort of, but not really, because my whole timeline got thrown off. Finally, goal three was to make $1,000 just with my editing clients that I got for myself. Um, so for those of you who followed me for a while, you know that I have clients that I mostly get through places like First Editing and Fiverr um, and Readsy. So I get them from like aggregated sites and agencies. Um, th that thousand dollars was designed to say, okay, these are people that you get either from YouTube or people who found your actual nonsense free editor site online. I didn't do super good on the website front. I think I need to do something with SEO or something because not very many people are stumbling upon that site. More is the pity. But you do actually save money if you go through them because you don't have to pay a middleman. So those were my goals. In using the HB90, I did really well. I enjoyed using it and I didn't use the daily pages, honestly. Um, towards the beginning I did because I had some really busy days. I was juggling a lot of projects, but most of the time my <laughs> wonderful 12 hour workday is usually broken up between one or two major projects. So most of the time I do not need those daily pages with all of that space for every day. So basically what I did is I, I had all the daily pages printed out. I just pulled those out. I put them to the side in case I needed them and I would be able to put them back into the planner if it came up where it's like, okay, well, you've got a lot going on today. Let's, let's use this. Or if I wanted the time block, which typically I don't because oddly enough, it's a source of stress for me. I found that I really enjoyed using the HB90. I just thought it was a great planner. It was a great system. Um, and I used it every day. A lot of times you can tell when a planner isn't right for you when you stop using it. Um, or you'll decorate it, but you won't actually write in it. You won't actually keep track of your tasks in it. That did not happen with the HB90. I found that I really enjoyed using it. So with that being said, for third quarter of 2020, and with all of the things I learned in mind, I am using, once again, Sarah Cannon's HB90. Now, if you are like me, you really, really don't like to stick with the same thing over and over again. Like they have the phrase planner piece. And that's important because if you stick with the same thing for a while, you're sick of it, it's not exciting anymore, and you don't wanna use it. So I went and bought a whole new happy planner, <laughs> that the inside of which I will never use, but I love this cover. I got this at Joann's and I just thought it was so beautiful. And I said, self, this is your planner for third quarter. So Happy Planner does really beautiful spreads. Um, you know, I do have some Erin Condren products. I really love them. Uh, but Happy Planner really hits it out of the park because they have so many different designs that you will never be disappointed. Um, there will always be something that 
speaks to you. Um, I'm kind of a neutral girl. I don't like their super colorful stuff, um, but they do come out with a neutral planner every time and many different layouts, and it's just really beautiful, and you can make it your own, which is what I've done here. So Happy Planner has these year at a glance things, which I've never used before, um, but we'll see how those work out for me. And I've kind of changed it up. So as I showed you last time, um, the HB90 planner has its own section where you write down your goals, where you brainstorm the projects that you want to do for your goals and just a lot of front work. And I kind of get overwhelmed with that and I'm not sure what to do with it. So I just did away with all of that because I'm like, I'm not going to fill it out. And then I feel guilty for not filling it out. So to avoid that, I just used one of her notes pages from the planner and I did my three goals and I made them very general this time. So goal one, very general, create passive income streams. So I'm going to go ahead and do my course and then I'm also going to record my audiobooks for books two and book three for the Black Magic series. I already have book one available. Um, and for those of you who have listened to book one and were perhaps disheartened, that my narration was a trifle fast and you had to slow it down via the Audible app. Apologies, a thousand apologies. You hear that I'm a talk fast, uh, a fast talker. I will absolutely do my very best to rectify that in these next two books. So <laughs> tell your friends if they were off put by the fast talking, I have heard you and I will fix it. The second one is to build an audience of readers and writers. And basically this is trying to build a community. I have two different websites. I have kristinmctiernan.com, which I have just revamped. I'm kind of moving it over from my old blogger site, which I'm going to be honest, I have been doing nothing with that site for the longest time. It was just like a placeholder. It was a dumping ground. I didn't have any direction and I didn't know what to do with it. So now I have a proper website, a proper author website, and um, I will be blogging regularly. So I will be blogging about movies and TVs. Uh, yeah, movies and TVs for heaven's sakes. I'll be blogging about uh, movie and TV essays on Mondays. And those, these are essays, not reviews. So it's kind of like a deep dive. On Wednesdays, it's gonna be all about writing. Maybe it's a book review or it's about writing craft. You know, it's gonna be about writer nerdery. And then Fridays are gonna be like fun days. So I think this first Friday fun day that's coming up it's gonna be about how different types of nerds are <laughs> similar to prison gangs and who lines up with who and why. Um, it's just kind of a really fun post. So I'm gonna try and keep it light on Fridays because it's Friday. And if you're wasting time at work on a Friday, you don't wanna be reading heavy stuff. I feel like there's enough of that out there. And then on Nonsense Free Editor, uh, my blog there is dedicated really to how to improve your writing. Um, a lot of bulleted lists, a lot of how to's, you know, just very, um, straightforward craft work. Um, so those are really easy to, to kind of scan. And then there's also a few of my YouTube videos from this channel um, on that site as well. So if you're just looking for just the craft ones, you don't want to look at the planner stuff or whatever, um, nonsensefreeeditor.com, that's where that's at. And then finally, I want to uh, create my books for 2021. I'm re-releasing what used to be called the Sunder series, but I have rechristened the Mason Timeline series. And this is my time travel slash alternate history series, wherein it takes place in a North America that was settled by the Spanish instead of the English. And all of the changes that came about, uh, the first and foremost being that the North American continent is pretty much run by the Catholic Church. Um, so it's kind of uh, like a theocracy. And I would not say it is a dystopia. Um, I would say it's firmly in the alternate history. So for next year, I'm releasing all three of those. I'm going to try and do it on a quarterly basis, skipping second quarter because generally, I'm, I'm not sure why, but book sales are slow for everybody during the summer months. So I'll be bypassing that. So as far as front matter goes, this is all I've got. Um, I don't have any in-depth analysis on how I did last time. I don't have um, a lot of the brainstorming that the HB90 planner provides you because for me, it's, it's just not helpful to my process. So this is it as far as front matter goes. So we come to July and like last time, I am using the actual happy planner monthly spread that came with the planner and the cover that I got. I do this because, you know, it's 
It's pretty. Um, the HB90 has very nice monthly layouts, but you know, they're a little more neutral. Um, and so I just choose to use these. And plus you get the awesome dividers. Um, I'm a big fan of those. They just help me understand. And so for these, you can see I don't have any clients that I got myself so far for this month. So hopefully I'll get some of those um, right now. I finished my last independent client, I think last week. Um, and so I am wide open for my own clients, but uh, first editing, of course, is keeping me busy. I guess now is uh, doctoral dissertation season or something because I'm getting a lot of academic work and that is so exhausting, y'all. So here is my first, I don't even know what she calls this. It's not the weekly spread, obviously, because that's on the next page. Um, but this is kind of like the breakdown of the tasks and the way it's designed to be used is you list each of your quarterly goals here at the top. And then underneath here, you write the tasks that you're going to be doing in furtherance of those goals. So under my passive income, I'm going to start recording uh, book two of my Black Magic series, which is Black Magic Shadow, um, with my husband being off to work. I'm actually using his closet. He loves him some clothes. And so he has the master bedroom closet to himself. Um, I wear nothing but yoga pants and I have like two nice outfits for the rare occasion that I actually leave my dungeon home. So I have one of the other bedrooms because like we said, we don't have children. Um, and that's where my closet is. So when he's gone, I can use his closet as kind of a DIY recording studio. Because of all the clothes in there, the sound is muffled. And so I don't have to worry so much about, you know, road traffic or my silly, silly dog throwing one of her little temper tantrums where she shakes her collar over and over again because she wants attention. Being in the closet gets rid of that. So yay. The second one is build an audience. And right now I'm kind of focused on having consistent blog content on both of my websites. Um, I am sticking my toe into an Amazon ad campaign for the Black Magic series, as well as a Facebook ad campaign. Um, I'm gonna be honest right now, neither of them seems to be panning out in terms of purchasing. So I think I might be screwing something up. Um, so I know that other authors have said that you kind of have to like tweak them. So I'm going to keep an eye on them, change things when I need to, um, and see if we can't get some more conversions. And then finally, goal number three, uh, create my 20, uh, 2021 books. And right now I have spoken to my artist and he is working on my cover for book one of the Mason Timeline series, uh, which was previously called Sunder, but now has a new title. And I'm really excited to see what he comes up with because it's gonna to be totally different from the old cover that I designed in Photoshop. Not bad, but uh, you know, not really commercial grade either. And then finally, this is my week spread where I've put these boxes at the top because that's what I'm kind of tracking my day job work in. Um, at my day job, I have been against my will transferred into a, another job role and another department. And uh, not enjoying it, y'all, just not. It, I'm on a team full of extroverts doing something that I only like about 20% of what the actual job entails, and that's the writing part. All the other is very audiovisual heavy, and um, I hate it, <laughs> I'm being honest. Um, even if it wasn't more time consuming, even if it took me the same amount of time as my actual job, that I applied for and was hired for, I would still hate it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a point of stress right now. But I do need to keep track of what I'm doing. And so what I do during the workday is in these squares. Um, we do have Friday off in celebration of the 4th of July, yay. And so I'll be meeting my sister for lunch and she's got four kids so she can't uh, just scoot on out the house. She has to wait until her husband has time off work. So that's good. And then what I'm doing this quarter, and I did not do this last quarter, um, I'm kind of tracking my content output here. So my YouTube, uh, my blogs, and then I have a kind of a checkbox. It's like, okay, you wrote a blog today. Have you posted a Pinterest graphic directing traffic to that blog? Um, have you posted about it on Instagram and Facebook? Um, kind of a reminder to me, I really haven't utilized Pinterest at all because I only use it for like, recipes and pretty nail designs, which I will never actually do on my nails, but I like to look at them. Don't ask me. <laughs> and then down here, 
I'm kind of directing myself to record two chapters a day. And I wrote in raw sound because the last time I recorded my audiobook, I would record something and then I would edit it. And editing the sound takes a long time, whereas recording it, not so much. Um, even if, as intended, I'm going to talk slower this time. So I'm gonna get everything recorded, and then once that's done, then I'm going to edit the sound, get it ready for the sound engineer, because they, they fix it up to Audible standards, and then I'm going to put it up on Audible. And then finally, I have three editing jobs in the works right now. Um, luckily, and I mean this sincerely, all three of these are genuinely like fun to edit. These are actual good writers. I don't have any jobs right now that are just like, oh, it's like, why do you hate me? I don't have any of those right now, and I'm, I'm so relieved. I've had fewer of those lately. And as you'll see here, um, previously I printed off the full-size HB90, so it had weekly, monthly, and daily. The HB90 also has the option to just do the weekly and monthly without the daily pages, and that's what I did. So whereas the other planner, this would be Monday, this would be Tuesday, and it would go on, um, now you've got a blank page for notes, and then a check-in for how the week went. That is all I have for my third quarter planner. I am so excited to dive into it. Technically, I kind of already have, but really tomorrow is the first day that I'll be able to do it. I'm really excited, and I can't say I'll use this planner forever because that would be silly, but I haven't found anything else that really works with me as well as the HB90 does. So my endorsement still holds true, and again, I'm not an affiliate, I just really, love this planner it's definitely working for me and if you're a writer or any kind of a creative entrepreneur or really someone who just you know you like the layout and you want all three i would go ahead and recommend it um she does offer on her etsy page um actual dated copies by the quarter um and then she has an undated and i have the undated one because you know uh, i can't always promise i'll print it off on time so whichever one works best for you, they've got full size and A5, I definitely recommend going to pick one up. And I do wanna mention that on that faded day when I reach 1,000 subscribers, I will be having a giveaway for the A5 size of this printed off on beautiful luxury paper with a binder of your choosing. And that will be my giveaway. And then of course you'll also get the digital files um, so you can keep it. So obviously I don't know when that'll happen. I think I just passed 270 subscribers, which is so awesome, you guys. I honestly never thought I would get past 100. So thank you to everyone who has followed me. If you have not yet followed me, but think you would like to, please go ahead and push that button. And until next time, take care and write well.